Coming up next on News Center 8, Hurricane Emily aims at the East Coast. We'll have a live report from North Carolina where 100,000 people have been told to get out. Michael ja Jackson canceled yet another concert in Asia. He says he's sick again, and it has nothing to do with alleged child molesting. And then meet the man who put fruit juice into cookies and made millions. Mm -hmm. That's in our focus report. And in weather, another hot and humid day for the North Coast. We'll tell you if we're ever going to see any relief. And we'll hear from David Letterman next on New Center 8. I heard it all over. You go to the party. I'm staying home. Now don't even think that. You try my flag. Analgesic cream? Uh-huh. Well, it's not smelly. No. Well, it's not greasy. No. It's more like a, a vanishing cream. A vanishing cream that helps make pain vanish. Your face. So this Myoflex penetrated deep down into the soreness and made it vanish. Which must be why all those pharmacists recommend it. Here we go. Would you mind vanishing? Vision. The act or power of seeing with the eye. Cataract. An eye disease in which the lens becomes opaque, causing partial or total blindness. No stitch. Today's latest technology to remove cataracts and restore vision. There's no hospital stay, so you can return to your everyday activity sooner than ever before. Happiness. Seeing clearly again. The Cleveland Eye Clinic. World-class excellence in eye care. Call 696-0300. Round 93, Saturday at 8 on Cleveland's own TV8. This new Saturday presentation is brought to you in closed caption. From Cleveland's own 24-hour newsroom, this is Cleveland's own News Center 8. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. At the top of the news is the hurricane getting ready to smack North Carolina. 100,000 people have been ordered to evacuate the coast of North Carolina with Hurricane Emily less than a day away. Emily's winds are 85 miles per hour compared to Hurricane Andrew, which hit Florida last year at 145. But still, there is great danger and for the very latest, we go live to reporter April Wilson, standing by in the city of Avon, North Mandatory Carolina. Mandatory evacuations have been in effect since 6 o'clock this morning. Now, if you look at the road behind me, this is one of the roads leading out of the Outer Banks. There's not too much traffic right now, but if you go further up the road, it's getting pretty heavy up there. Uh, most of the people are tourists who are leaving, who are heading for the mainland or for home. But a lot of the locals say they are staying and they're boarding up their homes and waiting for Emily. Although the sea appears to be calm, the anxiety further out and right here on Hatteras Island is building. Tourists are heading out, disappointed that their vacations are cut short. Been here for just a day. I have to turn around and leave for a while and come back, if we can get back. This family just got here yesterday. Now they're leaving 10 days earlier than planned. They'll continue their vacation on the mainland, hoping to come back in a few days. We waited all year, all year, all year, all year for, for vacation. And now we have to leave because of nature. So we can't do anything about it. Willie Foster makes his home here. He's lived through Gloria, Bob, and now he's not going anywhere for Emily. You know, people around here tend to take storms uh, not as serious as maybe they should, but you know, you've just always got to be ready for the worst, and you know, that's what people around here are trying to prepare to do now. And down by the gas station in Buxton, much of the same. A lot of the folks gassing up to go nowhere. And we've been here for years and years and just never know. I think most of the local people are going to stay. The evacuation, I think, is mostly for the people that are down on vacation. I think the eye is probably going to come within 50 miles of here. and. Uh, It'll be about a little bit worse than the March storm we had. That was almost a hurricane in March. So I'm not too worried about it. Now, there are only two ways out of the Outer Banks. Uh, the right Memorial Bridge, which is only two lanes and it's pretty piled up. And then there's also the Washington Bomb Bridge, which has recently been extended. Back to you. Thank you. Now, just where is Hurricane Emily and when do we expect her to hit land? Julie Hanahan's been tracking her path and Julie joins us with the latest in our weather center. Well, thanks, Dick and Laura. Yes, I have been tracking this hurricane all weekend long. We've been watching it. And right now, Hurricane Emily, these are her coordinates, the latitude and longitude. She has sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. Now, that's only 10 miles over what is required to become a hurricane. You have to have sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. There's the pressure right now. It's 325 miles southeast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. And the movement is slowed down a little bit. It's moving at the west-northwest at 7 miles per hour. Where are the watches and warnings up? Well, right now we have no warnings, but the watches 
Actually, this area has been made smaller. It's now from Little Inlet River in South Carolina all the way up the coastal area to Fenwick Island, Delaware, which is just on the Delaware-Maryland border. All this area, all this coastal area, have to watch out for the possibility of landfall. When is landfall going to come? Right now, it should be before 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. We'll have more on this, and we'll be following it for you as you continue watching News Center 8 weather. Back to you. Thank you, Julie. People in Des Moines, Iowa, are suffering from deja vu, more flooding. Downpours dumped up to 10 inches of rain there, forcing hundreds of residents to evacuate their homes. Emergency workers are trying to protect the city's water treatment plant from damage. Water poured in earlier during earlier flooding this summer. And guess what? More rain is forecast and flood warnings have been issued. One of the men who was part of the group that was going to be the salvation of the Cleveland School Board is reported to be quitting halfway through his term. The Reverend Leon Lawrence, one of the four L's, says he can't devote enough time to the school board because of, because of his commitments to his family and his church. According to Board President Lawrence Lumpkin, Lawrence says his uh, resignation effective tonight has nothing to do with an ongoing sexual harassment suit against him by a former church employee. Jury selection began this morning in the trial of Hinkley police officer involved in a fatal crash last December. Officer Daniel Huff was responding to a call for help from the Medina County Sheriff's Department when his patrol car crashed into another car, killing 38-year-old Bonnie Harshaw. The prosecution claims that Huff was reckless. But the defense says the brakes on the patrol car were defective as the officer had not been given adequate training. Michael Jackson has canceled yet another of his concerts in Asia, swears it has nothing to do with ongoing child abuse allegations against him. 40,000 fans in Singapore waiting for Jackson to come to the stage were told to go home. He's sick. The crowds were promised a makeup concert on Wednesday. Michael Jackson was seen leaving the stadium in Singapore and going back home. Jackson did stage a 35th birthday performance on Sunday, and he seemed to be well then. Hmm. Lending a helping hand may be the best way to show someone that you care. And that's exactly what thousands of volunteers are doing this week during United Way's Week of Caring. We join New Center 8's Debbie Kern now for a live report on where things are being kicked off. Debbie. Well, I tell you, we are in a very busy place right now. We're at the Father Barar Godspeed Hunger Center. And as you can see, there's people all around, and they are busily getting the uh, food ready for the people that are coming in to get their, their meal. Now, um, this is not the only place where volunteers are showing that they care. As a matter of fact, more than 2,000 employees of area organizations will be volunteering all week during the United Way's Week of Caring. Now, this Week of Caring also serves as the official kickoff of the 1993 United Way campaign. And joining me now is the volunteer chair, Bob Reitman. And Bob, tell me, this year, 1993, you say that you have a unique goal. What is that unique goal? Yeah, be recognizing that it takes sometimes uh, more than a year to plan for a real improvement in the campaign. We've decided upon a four-year goal. I and the next three chairs of the campaigns have decided, along with the Board of Trustees, that we're going to attempt to raise $200 million in Cleveland in the next four years to ensure that our network of uh, health and social services is secure. Now, exactly how are you going to raise that? That sounds like a lot of money. How are you going to raise it? Well, it is a lot of money, and we're going to do it just the way you always raise a lot of money, a small gift at a time. We're going to call on more people during this campaign. We're going to be reaching out to people who've not had a chance to make gifts in the, in the past, and we're going to be asking those who have been generous supporters to again be generous supporters. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. Now, in this week of caring, again, we've got a lot of volunteers who are going to be around the city of Cleveland volunteering their services for the United Way, and this is not the last that you've heard of the United Way because this is a kickoff for the 1993 goals. Now, back to you, Dick and Lori in the studio. Thanks, Debbie. I'm sure at one time you've served your kids a snack of juice and cookies. Well, next we're going to meet the man who put juice in the cookies, and he made a fortune. Stay with us. If anybody talked to me about my weight, I would get tears instantly. It just hurt too much to be fat. I went to Jenny Craig because of the one-on-one -on -one counseling. My counselor was Nancy. She was a friend. She had practical solutions to things. I could call her at any time, and she'd be there for me. So not being fat, I feel like a new me. 
Instead of just another diet, get personal weight management at Jenny Craig, all for just a dollar a pound. Call 1-800-92-JENNY. Today's top newsmakers come to Playhouse Square Center as TV8 presents the Morning and Evening Dialogues Speaker Series. Former First Lady Barbara Bush opens this year's Dialogues, followed by James Baker, Dick Cheney, Vincent Bugliosi, Andrea Mitchell, Jack Kemp, Star Jones, Paul Saugus, and Warren Rutman, plus the Capitol staff. Expand your world with a Dialogue subscription. Phone 348-5298. TV8 and Dialogues, your ticket to what's happening in the world. Excuse me, do you know about Solo detergent? Sure, with Solo, I can never forget the fabric softener. Well, we're changing the name. <gasps> we took the softness of Solo and that great Solo scent, plus we've added more concentrated cleaning. What would you call it? You changed my Solo? I, I call that very nervy, brave, audacious, courageous beyond all human ability. How about bold? Yeah, bold, like I said. Solo is now called bold, because to improve on Solo, you'd have to be bold. Well, there was something to see in Niagara Falls Sunday besides the famous waterfalls. Two 196-foot smokestacks were leveled on the New York side to make way for a new construction project. It took 2,400 pounds of explosives to get the job done. He put fruit juice into cookies and made millions. In today's Focus Report, we're going to meet the man behind one of the biggest snack ideas in a long time, Frookies. Maybe you've seen them at the supermarket and wondered why you didn't think of this. CBS Money correspondent John Stair has the story of sweet success. I want to be, I want to have more people eat frookies than cookies. You can't spend much time with Richard Wirth before he starts gushing about his flagship product, frookies. Not to mention frackers, fruitins, and frisks. The mantra is fat-free. Worth is the guru. Part of being an entrepreneur is that you are obsessed with the dream. You always see it in front of your head. You can't go, it's like, a, it's like the most wonderful curse you've ever met. This man with the multi-million dollar curse is a far cry from the Richard Worth of the 1970s. Convinced that money was evil, he started living off the land on a farm in Canada. I thought I would live in concert with nature and that money would not be a factor. The problem with not having money and not making money is that poverty isn't so fun either. Worth changed his course after his son Jonas nearly died during a difficult home birth. To improve his children's futures, he says, he set out to make a buck from his blueberries. I said, these are pies of jams, and it's gonna be jams. So he started making jam, sweetened not with sugar, but with concentrated fruit juice. He named it for where the berries grew, Sorrel Ridge. Okay. He launched R.W. Frookies only after selling Sorrel Ridge and making his first million collecting royalties. Frookies did $16 million in sales in just its first year. Mm -hmm. It's got a mediocre beginning, it's got a lousy middle. Now, along with his wife and cookie chef Randy, he pushes today's products and searches for tomorrow's. Ironically, his drive to be different sometimes includes borrowing the best of other people's ideas. There's still a touch of the rebel in Richard Worth. His dress code is off-the-rack casual. He sends dicky dartboards with his picture on them to grocery store buyers. Rebel, yes. But don't mistake him for the counterculture kid he used to be. Now you're into capitalism. Yes. Yes, I believe in capitalism. It's the only hope for this country. It's the only hope for me. It may sound like a contradiction, but Worth insists that an important part of success is failure. He says learning from your failures can help you learn how to do it right and eventually turn your dreams into reality. Well, you know, nutritionists say that more fruits and vegetables will mean a healthier life. And what's true for the rest of us is also true for professional athletes. Jim Hill reports that football coaches are catching that message and passing it on to their players. In the ranks of the National Football League, even the big guys are watching their weight these days. It's part of a push to cut the paunch out of pro football. The days are long gone when these guys wolf down thick steaks, a half pound of bacon, or a dozen eggs at every meal. Too much high fat and heavy protein are out, and more fruits and vegetables are in. Doctors have long linked the low-fat diet to helping prevent heart disease and cancer, but athletes are linking it to winning. 
I just feel better, you know. It's just, it's, I feel better, I'm, I'm quicker, and uh, it's helped my game, so why not? This computer is set up to lose two pounds a week. The Los Angeles Raiders are among the NFL teams coaching their players in how to stay lean and mean instead of big and bulky. Okay. They use then, computers to follow low-fat diets for guys like six-foot-five-inch defensive end Howie Long. They're losing fat and maintaining their lean body mass. Uh, they're keeping their muscle, and uh, just their whole body composition is changing. A survey done by a nonprofit foundation found 83% of the NFL's coaches are cutting back on high protein at the training table. And most teams are recommending their players eat six servings a day of fruit and vegetables. That's roughly twice the U.S. average. We don't know if there's a negative stereotype to fruits and vegetables, but uh, on average, men eat one serving less per day than women do. That may change as America's couch potatoes realize their gridiron heroes are paying more attention to broccoli than to beef. It's just clean food that makes you feel clean, that keeps you more alert, your energy level is higher. For years, there have been athletes who tried to boost their performance with what are called ergogenic aids. That's a fancy term for things like steroids that build muscle mass. The trouble is, steroids have bad side effects. Good nutrition, on the other hand, doesn't have a downside. And let's face it, no one's going to get in trouble having another plate of peas, beans, or cauliflower. Jim Hill for CNN, Los Angeles. Well, we caught Julie using the copy machine over the weekend again to crank out the forecast for oh, the next boy. four or five days. It huh? is, boy. It's rerun city one way or the other. We've actually, move the temperature up a little bit since this morning. We'll tell you how warm it's going to be this afternoon coming up right after this. And now, the top three reasons why you should watch Tim Taylor's exclusive interview with David Letterman this Monday on News Center 8. Number three, Dave and Tim decide who's having the worst hair day. Number two, for Dave's reaction when asked to host this year's Woolly Bear Festival. And the number one reason why you should watch Tim Taylor's interview with David Letterman, because Dave said so. Darn it, Letterman, Monday, and only on News Center 8. We'll see you in the theater. Bring your tights, Tim. All right. Hello, B. I was just calling to congratulate Lauren. Noreen, thanks. Do you remember her first recital? And now look at her. Oh, congratulations. B, she has heard the news. We are so proud. You worked hard, you did your best. Lauren. Nothing says congratulations. You tell her. That is for you. Like a phone call. That's what this call for. Gosh, why don't you call Empire Windows? Seriously, celebrating our 32nd anniversary, Empire Window Company is offering a double hung replacement window for as little as $159. Not sure who to call about replacement windows? Call Empire, the company that gives you quality guarantee and the price you can't afford. Call Empire now at 449-8887 or anywhere in Ohio, 1-800-EMPIRE-7. They invade by the thousands, leaving an invisible chemical trail. But ants can be stopped by the exterminator, the Orkin Man. The exterminator wipes out ant armies with the awesome power of his advanced pest control technology. He destroys ants and their colony and makes sure they never return. Guaranteed. The exterminator, the Orkin Man. One call destroys them all. Well, if you haven't been outside yet, all it takes is one quick trip, and you'll know it is very, very warm out there, and it's just going to keep getting warmer. First, we'll take a look at our current conditions outside. We have clear skies and 85 degrees. Watch that temperature can continue to rise. I think we should quite handily reach 90 or above this afternoon. Southwest winds coming in at 7. Humidity is a little bit on the low side, 57%. Barometer rising, 30.06. No precipitation and allergens. I got to tell you, it's a good day for sneezing. Ragweed is way up there, 157 grains per cubic meter. And mold spore, that's at 42, which is also on the high side. So you may be seeing some sneezing coming your way this afternoon. Our first morning radar, we're taking a little bit different look just because so many people have called this morning about Hurricane Emily. And you can see right now there is no precipitation all along the East Coast. This will probably change, perhaps even as you watch Dick Goddard later tonight, and certainly Andre tomorrow morning will have a lot of precipitation showing up as that hurricane comes on shore. 
Let's take a look at our shoreline. If you want to go out and do some boating, 76 degrees. East winds 10 to 15 knots today. They'll become south-southeast a little bit later tonight and pick up just a little bit to about 20 knots. And waves are also going to pick up to about 2 to 4 feet by the later evening hours. Across the state of Ohio, is there any question this is a hot day? Let's take a look at it. Wow, temperatures are all over the place and all over the 80s. 86 in Akron, Canton, 85 in Columbus, that's matched down in Huntington. Also in 86 over in Cincinnati. Very warm temperatures, very muggy air all across the state. And because of this, we may see some afternoon showers pop up as well, which would probably be a welcome sight. There's your sunrise and sunset for this morning. We dropped down to 66 degrees last night for a rather muggy low. And there's your record high and low for this date here in Cleveland. Clouds moving across the country. You can see that we had some high cloud cover today, but right now we are all clear across the state. This cloud cover has some precipitation, and as we said earlier, dropping sometimes up to 5 to 10 inches of rain in parts of Iowa over the weekend, the last thing they need. But they do have a cold front that's going to be pushing through. A warm front is what's raising our temperatures for this afternoon. After this moves on through, we're looking for the cold front to come in later tonight and into tomorrow. That may trigger some more general showers, and as Emily starts to move up, that may bring more moisture into the air as well. So we have a pretty good shot of getting a little bit wet this week, which would be welcome. Temperatures in the 90s, steamy 90s all across the south, still warm across the east coast, much cooler behind this cold front, although we're going to temper this weather as it moves our way. Today, some hazy sunshine with a chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Look for a high temperature of 92 degrees. Tonight, partly cloudy with a continuing chance of a shower or thunderstorm. We'll drop down to a muggy 71. Tuesday has a pretty good chance of a shower across the whole area, about 50% with a high of 88. And we've got to keep that chance of showers in the forecast Wednesday through Friday. Although temperatures moderate a little bit, we'll go down into the low 80s. Uh -huh. <laughs> 880 is the weather line number. And unfortunately, it should be about 78 degrees as our normal high, but we're exceeding that by quite a bit. All right. Okay. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Wall Street today starts the week on the uh, upside, the Dow Industrial Average up almost four at 36.44, trading light, average share up 7 cents, and gold at 368.70, that's a little lower. Quick sports note here at noon, the Browns have cut their squad to the regular season number of 47 players. Names haven't been released yet, but there aren't too many surprises expected. Tomorrow, the Browns can sign up another six players after they clear a 24-hour waiver period. And tonight is the night the television world is awaiting. What does David Letterman have to say about his much ballyhooed premiere right here on TV8? We'll find out when we come back. Come on, move this! For unforgettable colors, it's always Revlon. Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick. Yo. Rich fashion shades that last on your lips for up to six super lustrous hours. Come on. And Revlon's number one in long wearing nail enamel. Yo. Come on, move this. The shine, shine, shine. Take that body for me. Revlon, unforgettable colors that last. That's why the most unforgettable women in the world wear Revlon. Taste what's come to Smuckers. A really grapey grape. Introducing Smucker's Super Spreaders. So good tasting, so easy to spread. No wonder kids love it. More fruit and 25% less sugar than regular jelly. Fortified with vitamin C. And Smucker's Super Spreaders comes in a glass you can keep. With a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. Hey, don't forget us. We like Smucker's Super Spreaders, too. Experience the sights, the sounds, the magic of the world's rainforests at Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. National City supports the zoo. Want it all? Like top quality and bottom dollar? You got it. Like nothing today right now? You got it at Kronheim's. Get all you want in a furniture sale. Totally. Kronheim's total inventory is 30 to 63% off, including breathtaking new introductions for this fall with no down payment, no payments until February. Want it all? You got it at Kronheim's now. The total sale, the best total deal you'll find through Monday only at Kronheim's. 
you might just want to squeeze in a nap today so you can catch the premiere of The Late Show with David Letterman tonight right here on TV8 at 11.30. So what can we expect to see? Letterman began his day with CBS This Morning talking with Harry Smith and Paula Zahn. Everyone is doing fine with or without us. We, we hope that everyone will do well with us, but we know that this did not get to be the number one network by dumb luck. Well, actually, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> Come to think of it, it, it is dumb luck. But still and all, here you are. Uh, I don't feel any pressure. You know what it is, if, if, when you enjoy doing something, if you, like if you go on a vacation that's too long, like it's a week long or a half a week too long, you can hardly wait to get back because you miss what you're doing. That's how I feel now. And, and my only uh, pressure is the, the way I would have pressure under any other show uh, circumstance, which is we just want to do a nice show. We want to, you know, get these under our belt and, and, and kind of start working on the actual content of the show. I mean, I've been doing a lot of silly things over the last six months um, that I normally would not be doing, but because of the job change, I've been doing these other things. Like and what? Oh, and so traveling, it's fun to get out of New York City and, and talk to people with a different perspective uh, on your work, on television generally. Uh, it's fun to meet other people. You know, and this is no surprise, this is no great insight here, but then look who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you leave New York City, and, and God knows I love New York City, people seem to be automatically, and for no apparent reason, friendlier, more open, more trusting. Um, and obviously, as I said, I'm not the first one to say this, but it's disarming. And then, when you kind of relax into it, it's so refreshing. And it's just, it's like a miracle. Now, wait a minute. You, are you, you're sincere? This is, this is not, this yeah. is not the setup for a... Uh, no. 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 You're talking about our Midwestern roots? I'm not talking about go, go anywhere. Go anywhere. It's because people in New York City have other things. Their focus, their attention, their energy is, is placed on other activities, which is, you know, by and large, survival. But they have, have <laughs> lost this kind of openness. I, I'm not saying this to criticize New York City. I'm just saying it is a wonder when you experience it by leaving the city. I was... I was in Baltimore, a huge city, uh, a very large, very sophisticated uh, metropolis or metroplex. And uh, people there were very nice. I've been to Indiana. I've, I've been uh, to Texas. I've, I've been to Missouri. Uh, I've been to Tennessee. They're just nice. For no, no reason they're nice. And you think, well, this is probably more what God had in mind for folks. You know? <laughs> Don't you think? Once again, Letterman premieres here on TV8 at 1130 tonight. And on New Center 8 at 5 and at 6 o'clock today, join our own Tim Taylor for his exclusive interview with David Letterman, where they discuss the hassles of overly curly hair, among other very pressing subjects. And don't go away, we'll be right back. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. You know, people who start chewing free dent because it won't stick to most dental words keep chewing it because it tastes great. That's why they stick with the gum that won't. Non-stick free dent, the perfect gum for almost perfect teeth. to the point before winter does. These days, Catholic schools have been closing here in Cleveland and all over the country. Today, a new set at 5 o'clock, Lori Jennings takes us to a nearby community that's bucking the trend and actually is starting a new Catholic school. And today at 5 and 6, a new set at after all the hype, he's finally here. David Letterman comes to CBS tonight at 11.30. And at, on TV8 at 5 and 6, our Tim Taylor makes Dave break out in laughter. That you won't want to miss. Mm -hmm. Plus, a new center rate at 6, the surf's up and so's the anxiety as Hurricane Emily nears the East Coast. We'll have more on the hurricane on new center rate at 6 o'clock. And finally this noon, can you say I do 100 times fast? That's how many people exchange their wedding vows all over again in Indianapolis at a mass wedding. The only catch had to have been married at least 50 years to participate in this special ceremony. One longtime couple says they've been coming to Indianapolis to 
renew their vows for the past 12 years. That's our report this noon. Thanks for being with us. Have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow.